Some guys like to die if a gal does them wrong. And others lie awake and cry the whole night long. Some people lose a baby, they just throw a fit. But me, I just sit down and knit. I'm gonna knit, knit, knit all day. I'm gonna knit my blues away. Well, if I'm feeling low, I knit a row. Cause a fella needs his knitting just to ease his soul. Well, hello, King Cole was a merry old soul. Whenever he was feeling down, he called for his needles and he called for his wool. And he knitted himself a crown. Why, baby? everyone and welcome to what will probably be my last treats or tricks Tuesday for a while um life has just been getting busier and busier and it's now coming into spring and um soon you know summer will be back because we have really short springs and falls where I'm at so anyway um I'm not going to have too much time to be able to commit for something like this and, you know, guarantee that I'll be home or somewhere where I can actually do these things. Um, And I'll probably not be on Periscope too much in general anymore, but you're more than welcome to start following me on YouTube for my podcasts. Um, Welcome to my craft room. I will for sure be continuing that. And that's once a week. I try and do it on Sunday, Monday, but that day might be changing too. Lots of things going on. So um, today I will be showing you knitting in the round on a 9-inch circular. A lot of people have troubles using a 9-inch circular and there is a trick to it. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Um... Does anyone have any questions before I get started on this? Now, when I do change the camera around, I will be able to still see comments, so. Oh, got to finish rubbing in my stuff. I used some of the um, Lolo Bar from Barmaids. It's a little lotion stuff, and it's fabulous. I love it. It's It really helps. <laughs> The changing of the season screws up my skin pretty bad. All right, so since it doesn't look like we have any um, questions, I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around here and we'll get started. Oops, all the way around. There we go. Okay. As you can see my my cat's feet down there. (laughs) So that's my cat. (laughs) He's like, mom, you're supposed to be letting me sit in your lap. All right. Try and get this adjusted good here so you guys can see what I'm doing and so can I. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I got to start the show from my toddler. There we go. All right. We should be good for a minute now. All right, so um, let's adjust this a little bit more and bump it into the camera. There we go. So when I'm holding these, you know, a lot of people you hold with all your fingers on the outside. I tuck my pinkies to the inside here. Um, And that helps tremendously. So, as you see, I was in the middle of a stitch there where I left it off, so I have a pearl stitch next. But by tucking in your pinkies, and of course my fingers are now cold, 
um, that allows you the more control. And then you're also not straining your pinkies and whatnot so much. So I'm using a um, 2.25 millimeter, I think that these are. Mm, it doesn't say on these ones, does it? There it is. Yeah, 2.25 uh, millimeter US 1. And these are Chow Goos. Let's see if you guys can see that here. There you go. So, Chow Goo 9 inch circular, size US 1 or 2.25 millimeter um, for metric. Everyone else. Well, I, I think China has their own system too. I'm not sure. So anyway, I'm going to do a few more stitches here for you. And so I love these needles for working on socks. It, you don't have to fuss with switching of needles and cables and whatnot at all. But basically these types of needles are restricted to things like gloves and socks only so I don't own too many of them I would love to own more um, you know have a, a couple more sizes but they're just they don't work for too many other projects so I tend to only have one or two of something if it only works for one type of project Now, you may also notice I don't have any stitch markers on here to show me the beginning of the round, but you'll see my tail here is coming up soon from doing the long tail cast on. And, oops, that didn't go all the way. Um, so I use that tail to show me the beginning of the round. And I'll show you here as soon as I come to it what I mean by that. Okay, so you'll see it's sticking out the middle there, and you can kind of see the little bumps from where it's being weaved up, but I can just give it a, a quick little tug, and then you don't see those very well anymore. Um, I actually have really good lighting right now, so you can still see it. And it's what I do is I'm now going to, so it's hanging to the outside, so I would now take that and put it to the inside, and that just shows me that I've completed a round which I need to now mark on this pattern. And I'll do that here in just a moment. So I just don't like leaving off on a pearl stitch. I like my next stitch to be the knitted ones. Now this one is a twisted knit stitch. So. And so here's my my pattern and it says to work my ribbing 10 rounds so I've worked five already so that was the sixth round so I just put a little note there and there's the, the name of the pattern there this is a free pattern on Ravelry good morning Cindy is it afternoon? No. Well, it's still morning for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Hello. Yes, a baby deer. I'm sorry. Toddler. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was saying at the beginning of the scope that I'm not going to be doing these anymore for a while. I just have too much life going on. 
I think it is just us at the moment. Um, it says there's three people on here, but there are no hearts coming from other people. There are no comments coming from other people. Um, but is what I'm showing you is knitting in the round on a nine inch circular. So a lot of people have trouble with it. Um, thank you. I've got, this is, um, from Knit Picks and it's the Hawthorne and I can't remember exactly what color it is, but it's, a beautiful shade of purple I think and it variegates a little bit um, so you know you have a little bit of fun to it but not so much that it takes away from the pattern um, but so do you knit with a nine inch circular at all have you tried You've never tried. Okay, so um, the nine inch circulars are great for socks and mittens. And I haven't discovered too much after that. <laughs> but um, if you decide to pick up some, you want to knit like this. That's how most people knit. They have all their fingers on the outside of the project and then their thumbs on the inside. Take your pinkies and put them to the inside of the project. Just underneath the cable or the needle because these needles are short. They're super short. Um, and so you don't have that stability of them being on the outside. So your pinkies are kind of like in the way almost, I guess. Um, and of course we don't want to chop them off. We want to keep using them. <laughs> um, so I take them and I put them to the inside of my project or on the other side, I guess. And the cable, they rest right there on the cable and it helps tremendously to make it so you can then knit on these nine inch circulars. No one ever told me any tricks about these when I first got some. And the first ones I got were little bamboo ones where the needles are even smaller. So, um, it was most definitely a trick that when I figured it out, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a lifesaver. I'm sorry, I keep bumping the stick that the camera's on. Let me see if I can adjust it more here. Oh. Yeah, no loop, no fussing with double points. You just keep going in a circle. You you know, it's like working on a miniature hat. <laughs> so as you could probably make like a doll hat on these. Because, you know, dolls need hat too. on all sock patterns. So, um, can they be used on all sock patterns? I would say yes. Um, you know, they do have many sizes. These are the size one or 2.25 millimeter chow goos. And I'm in love with them. Um, I'm absolutely loving the chow goo needles. Um, I have found some others that I enjoy, but my collection of Chalkus is growing more than any other brand. So, where'd my pattern go? Oh, it fell way over here. Sorry. 
So this is a cabled pattern and I've used them with cables before. I've used them with um, striping before. And in lace work. I have not done. Um, yes, they do si come in size two. Um, Gunner, get down, please. Um, I don't personally have a size two. I have a zero and a one on these right now. I do need to get the two and three soon because those the zero one two and three are all sizes i use on socks on a regular basis um with my traveling socks um the next one that's going around round so we're finishing up round two here pretty quickly and i'm sorry we're finishing up round one here soon round two will be starting Yes, you can use size three. Um, size three is used for my winter weight socks, though. Um, sorry, they're worn, but these are, and not finished, haha. <laughs> um, these are done on a size three, and they're using a, a worsted weight yarn. This is the LRA Lace Merino Worsted with a size three needle. So with that sock, I adapted another pattern that uses a sock weight yarn to use the worsted and the size three. But, um, so round three of the traveling socks will actually be on a, a worsted weight yarn. And um, for people that are new to sock knitting, I recommend starting off with a worsted weight sock just because it goes a little bit faster. Gunner, get off the couch like that. Sorry. New couch and the toddler is walking on it and we're trying not to let him do things like that seven socks and have finally passed the hem. So, um, are you doing top down or toe up? Have you tried both? Top down vanilla pattern. Okay, so um, when I first started knitting socks, I tried top down. I failed. I failed again. And I failed again. And finally, I was like, okay, top down just doesn't work for me. So I tried to toe up and I finally finished a sock. So that would be my recommendation for you to try next is... Um, a toe up and if you want just a vanilla pattern I have a it's my winter sock it's just a basic size 3 worsted weight um, plain old sock you know nothing fancy but it is toe up and there's links for videos how-to videos for every part of it well except for how to knit and purl because I would and then I think I didn't do the knit front and back either I might have I know the cast on is there and the bind off was there Um, if 
the if it just isn't interesting enough for you, um, most definitely go with the worsted weight. Uh, the pattern on Ravelry, yes, it is. Um, Hi, Lisa. And where's my tablet? I just had it. Where'd I put it? <laughs> I was. I would show you. Um, but I set my tablet somewhere and it's ran away with me. Okay. Um, well, it, it is on Ravelry. It's called Anna's Winter Socks. Um, you'll try that next. Okay. Um, there are other toe up patterns out there. Um, I don't know too much about any of them. I figured out that I needed toe up and couldn't understand a lot of other people's patterns. They were just too, too wordy. And finally I figured out how to just gunner stop, stop, stop. I'm sorry. He's having a fit about Legos. Stop gunner. Okay. They're over there. They're over there on the blanket, on the blanket. There you go. Okay. Crisis averted. When you get to the heel. Okay. So the pattern that I did that I wrote, um, the heel is actually fairly simple and there is a great video tutorial on, um, how to do it. Then also, if you are having issues, I am more than happy to help. I've helped with Lisa before as well, um, where I'll just get on either Google Hangouts. Leave the cat alone. He's got a piece of trash, so what? My cat is as bad as a dog. Stop it. Sit down. Sorry, this is part of why I can't do um, periscopes too much anymore. Um, I've never made through the heel. You have to do the heel soon, Lisa. You will be doing an afterthought heel. You will be doing that very, very soon. Within the next two weeks, I hope. Um... you've ripped out um so something else yeah okay <laughs> um something else you so both of you might want to try doing is knit a baby sock first so in my patterns there is you know a a small size a very very small child size knit that one first just to get the hang of it and then that will show you quickly, you know, the toe, the heel, uh, cast on, bind off, the whole nine yards, you know, what you're doing, but in mini form. Um, if you want to go even smaller, you're on my website. There is a free download for the mini sock. Sue's mini sock and got stuck, but luckily the girl in Norway. Okay. Um, so if you go to my website, there's a free mini sock download and the sock is like this big, it's tiny and it's done with a fingering weight toe up and it uses, yeah, the micro sock, um, Uh, I'm happy I finally made it to the knit knit stitch sec knit stitch section. So when you're just going around in circles, I can't. I can barely handle doing plain old socks anymore because they're just not interesting enough for me to keep me going. So on Alpaca Anna's 
socks. Um, where's my purse? Oh, it's down here. Sorry. Arm in front of the camera. So Alpaca Anna has, so these are done on the magic loop, but, um, so I did the toe just fine. No problem. You know, toe has something going on. So it keeps me interested. And then right after that, you start the pattern work. Well, this part here has taken me longer than this combined, <laughs> just because it's a plain, just knit in circles. Now, if I put them on like these needles here, it would go faster because I wouldn't have to fuss with the needles. So, um, Lisa, you came in after, <clears throat> sorry, getting scratchy here. Um, I, I'm just showing that on the nine inch circulars, you tuck your pinkies underneath. So instead of having them on the outside like that, you tuck them underneath and that helps you get the, um, stability. You're going to get the nine inch. It most definitely, as long as you, um, you know, if you have the patience to learn it, then it's, they're great. My first socks were on DPNs and <laughs> Gunner, it will come on. Please stop. He is freaking out every time the show ends. So I was, I first learned with DPNs and between where the needles were, um, this section here would be so stretched out. So, um, I was on a Facebook group and I asked them, you know, what would they recommend to kind of help close that up? And they said, uh, so Okay, um, so I asked them, you know, hey, what should I do? And they said, um, try the magic loop. So I got the magic loop, or, you know, or I got the, the cable needle to do a magic loop. And I'm able to now pull that stitch tight enough so it's pretty well unnoticeable, you know, as for the fact that I'm changing needles. Now, with nine inch circulars, you don't change needles at all. So it's fantastic. You just go in circles forever, for days and days and days. Mommy, it's starting. Quit freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I, it took me a little while, you know, Lisa, by all means, don't think that I pick this stuff up and, and it's second nature to me. Um, it took me three years just to learn how to knit. The heel, um, when the heel, I don't use the nine inch on, I will get, um, a, another needle out to do the heel. And so my top stitches will sit on the nine inch circular and then I'll work the heel over DPNs usually. And then as soon as the heels worked, I pick it back up onto the nine inch circulars. My cat is being crazy and it's making my child be crazy. Oh my goodness.
Okay, so, um, better before I attempt a nine inch. Yes. Um, work with what you have first. Um, and then, you know, get to know the pattern a little bit so you're not frustrated with the pattern. Um, with toe up socks, I start off with magic loop and then I switch to you're starting alpaca anna's over uh oh you're gonna be excellent at toes by the time you're done with that Anna or Lisa <laughs> you didn't like it uh, what didn't you like about it The sides on your toes. Um, and you're using the magic loop method, right? You can't get any tighter. Um, try going down a needle size. So if you're using like the um, 2.5, go down to the 2.25. You're doing on a one. Um, so yeah, try like um, a zero or a half. I only say that because I actually have those. <laughs> um, I have a whole bunch of sock needles now. I used to... You have to buy more. Um, yeah, so if you're... Some now... I got really aggravated the other day. And... I was buying more size ones and I just go off of the package and that one actually says it's a size two. Uh, When you, okay, so threes with a fingering weight yarn, you're, um, it just becomes very loose knit. Um, like, let's see if I can show you good on these. Uh, I'm using two totally different yarns on these. And one is most definitely finer than the other. So you really can't see my finger through the toe here, but you can see it through up here. Now, this is equivalent to using like a half size bigger than down here. Because, and that's just because the size of the yarn. And you see how tight knit that is compared to how loose this is um and yes i did make a mistake in the pattern work up here so it's off by i think it was two stitches and i noticed that and i got tired of trying to fix it so i figured i won't use that one for photos <laughs> i'll use the other one for photos if i ever get there um, so yeah, it, Lisa, you might want to try going down a needle size, um, for yours and no, don't lose me. <laughs> um, so if you use like a size three with fingering weight, it just gives you a much looser stitch. Uh, 
You know, I have another project here. I can show you part of it, maybe. Let's see if I can stretch out just enough of it. So, these are a size 5. Uh-oh, it froze. That's no fun. So, these are a size 5 in fingering weight yarn. So, you see how loose that stitch is. You can really see through that. And that's a size 5. Right. But that's all I can show you of that project. That one is, if you watched my podcast, I show you my bag from Lone Large, but I don't show you the project. That's part of the project that's in that bag. <laughs> okay. Why don't we flip you guys around so I don't have to knit all funky. Hi. <laughs> um, yes. So I'll still be knitting on these. Oh, I have done. Oh my gosh. You guys didn't remind me to mark down. I did a four on one. Way loose. I got through half the podcast. Okay. Um, did you get to the hair part? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have to count rows now. I I know I've done at least one more if not two. No, I'm not going to take it off right now. Um it it will come off more later. I want people to go watch the podcast and watch the whole crazy reveal or whatever. Yes, I suck. I'm evil. You can call me whatever name you want, and I'll probably agree with you. <laughs> okay, so that was the cast on. One, two, three. Oh my gosh. I need, like, a flashlight or something. <laughs> uh, the haircut, did I do that myself? No. Podcast, here you go. Yes. Yes. So, um... Yeah, I still have hair back here. It's still there. It's just not all there. <laughs> and and you have to go watch the podcast to see. Yes, it's crazy. Um, I'm hoping... So you see it's bright behind me. I'm... And there's my cat. Cat butt. <laughs> That's his favorite sleeping spot. He gets up here and he sleeps behind my head. Um... But yeah, I'm hoping that the weather will continue to be good this week. Um, it says it will be. You know the weatherman, they lie. <laughs> um, but if it is, um, I'm going to do most of my podcast outside so you can actually see colors because they tend to be wrong inside. Like my sweatshirt. Is almost right, but not quite. My cat is lighter than that. He's not quite that orange. He's very pale. And that's part of why I got him, was he was the palest that I've ever seen when it comes to the orange cats. Okay, I have to count these rows. Maybe, if I can see enough. Um, maybe I should count this side, it'd be easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Okay, I'm working on round nine. Wow, that was a lot that I didn't mark down. So that's six, seven, eight. Um, yes. I need to continue scoping. I'm not gonna do anything more where, like, I'm committed to it. Um, if I scope anymore it's going to be random because I can type things uh, so you can ask questions well you can ask me questions on the podcast you can leave comments I'm still on Ravelry I check Ravelry at least twice a day um, usually when I get up and then before I go to bed and I'm usually on there throughout the day almost always um, with 
<coughs> by taking Periscope out more, I will be able to try and do more how-to videos that are actually on Periscope, or I mean on YouTube, where it's straight up, here's how you do it. There's no chitter-chatter. Um, I don't repeat myself a hundred million times, because I do that anyway. <laughs> Um, but they'll be a little more professional-like, um, but I need to finish the work in my craft room. So we recently redid our, one of our bathrooms, and, um, my craft room is a mess. It's, it's a big mess right now. Um, there's lots of work still to go in there. Okay, last round for this, and then my pattern changes. Mark it down. Um, so yeah, with questions and stuff, you can still get a hold of me. Um, my Everything's linked through my website, so... At least I think it is. <laughs> um, and hopefully I'll be able to start uploading how-to videos soon. Soon, soon. I don't know how soon, though. <clears throat> You'll be che each other's cheerleaders for socks. There you go. Um... So, also on my YouTube, my podcast, I'm doing a make-along where you finish old projects. And we earn points, which that's something I'm, I have to do today. So, I have my journal out here to show you. Um, I have one of those bullet journals, and... I have been okay. uh, yes, I was gonna say it's it started with a C and then right as you type it, I remember it's Cindy. Cindy. Um, let me go out here. So I'm trying a new weekly view and the way that I wrote it out I can actually show people now people are like oh I want to see what your journal looks like and I can't show them because it's got too much of the work stuff in it but the way that it's being done now I can actually show so um I actually did that yesterday <laughs> I can work that one off. I just worked on that one way too late. So, you know, like, so today I have, okay, do the last Tricks or Treat Tuesday. I have a crochet owl project that I need to work on. I'm, so in the red here, so I, it's kind of color coded too. Um, the red is all of my podcast work stuff. <clears throat> So yesterday I did my, I remembered to do my post on Ravelry and today I need to go find one of my projects that needs the ends weaved in and weave those in so we get our first point towards our 100. So I'm going to mark off that I did my last scope. And then the Storm Shawl, which is that one that I showed you on the size 5 needles with the fingering weight yarn. And then the blue. That's like emergency stuff, that light blue. Because um, I haven't even started a project yet. And it's my niece's birthday on Thursday. And I have to get it done by Thursday. So that's what I'll be doing probably after this.
Yeah. But then also, that helps for like when I go back to see what I did for my podcast. Um, I have a terrible memory, so I have to go back and look. It's like, oh, what am I supposed to be showing? Oh, well, I worked on these. What double points should you have? Um, it's a matter of preference. When I was using, or when I do use double points on socks, I use the short ones. Um, they're four or five inches. And, of course, you want to have the same size as what the pattern calls for, what it is that you're getting gauged with. Um, with the worsted weight, you know, it, it's a size three and... It kind of depends on what yarn you use. Um, if you were to use like Red Heart worsted weight yarn, to me that's more of an Aran weight. It's a lot heavier. Um, so, where'd the sock go? There it goes. You can see here, this is actually a heavy fingering weight. But you can see the difference between those. There we go. 